Well, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? Would you like to stand up as we get started? Come, let's put our hands together. Father, we thank you for bringing us here this morning. We celebrate your, your resurrection. Meet with us in this place. Praise the Lord. Here we go. A praise in the valley. A praise on the mountain. Praise in the shore. Praise when I'm doubting. I praise when outnumbered. I praise when surrounded. Just praise in the waters. My enemies drowning. As long as I'm breathing, I got a reason to pray. Praise when I don't His praise is a weapon It's still in control His praise is a weapon It's more than a sound His praise is a shout That brings everyone out As long as I'm breathing risen this morning Jesus and we give you all the praise and we sing it a praise cause you're sovereign praise cause you reign praise cause you rose and defeated the grave praise cause you're faithful praise cause you're true praise cause there's nobody greater than you praise cause you're sovereign praise cause you reign praise cause you rose and defeated the grave Praise cause you're faithful, praise cause you're true, praise cause there's nobody greater. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. your name on high and we say we gather here as a church to sing praises to a risen savior amen church let's sing this together i need a rescue my sin was heavy chains break at the weight of your glory i need a shelter i was annoyed but you call me a citizen of heaven I need a rescue, my sin is heavy, 
chains break at the weight of your blood I need a shelter, I was a northern You called me a citizen of death Oh, when I was broken, you were my healing And your love is the air that I'm breathing I have a future, my eyes are open Cause when you call my name I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glory you call my name
to the tomb early in the morning they had organized their spices to go and put on the body 
of Christ. When they got there, the stone had been rolled away. And in panic, they went inside and they looked and his body wasn't there. But there were two men standing in white and the Bible says their clothes looked like, linen, like white linen with lightning. And they said, why do you seek the living among the dead? What separates our religion from every other religion is that we serve a God who is risen. Amen? Amen. And that is the cornerstone, that is the bedrock of our faith. That we have a hope for tomorrow. That when Jesus says he's going to do what he says he'll do, he will do it. And we believe that one day he will come again. Amen? Amen. And so this morning I want us to sing that bridge one more time. Knowing full well that there is no rival and God has no equal because he is alone. Amen? Because you have no rival. You have no equal. Now and forever, God, you reign. Yours is a kingdom. Yours is a glory. Yours is a So this morning, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for holding us close to your heart. Thank you for thinking of every one of us. You knew that one day we would be here, so you hung on that cross, so we, so we would have a way to salvation. And so we don't take that lightly, not just on this Sunday, but every Sunday. May that truth ring in our hearts. So be with us. Speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said... Amen and amen. I'm going to say this one time. He is risen. He is risen. One more time. He is risen. He is risen. Amen. Why don't you greet the person next to you? All right. Well, good morning, everybody. Let's give it up for the worship this morning. That was amazing. We have such a good team. Hey, before I get started, Pastor Andrew Baines, <laughs> if you're in middle school, junior high, please, you guys can exit out the back. You guys are heading to the bus. Enjoy the rain. Just throw up your hood if you need it, you know, whatever you need. But yes, junior hires, middle school, you guys can exit out the back. Well, good morning, you guys. Happy Easter. I'm so glad you guys all made it through the rain. It's cold and wet out there, but you know what? You guys look great. Y'all look so good in your Easter best. I put on a dress for you guys. You're welcome. Um, no, you guys look great. Make sure you guys take a family photo today. We, we set it up for you, and all the kids will have wet hair, but you know what? That's all right. My hair looked a lot better earlier. It's all good. So anyways, um, a couple things for you guys. As you guys came in, you may have grabbed one of these. If you did not get one, they are in the pockets of the chair in front of you. We need each person to fill this out today. This is a system update card. And what this does is this helps us out, helps me out. So if anything, do it for me. Um, but this way we have all of the correct information about all the families here. Some people may have multiple um, like things in our system. Maybe there's different addresses. We just want to make sure we have the correct information on everybody. So please start filling that out now because we're going to pass the buckets at the end of the news and you can drop them in there. And on the back, there's an option for you guys to check series ideas for Rod and our pastors to speak on in the future. There's a couple options there. There's an option for something that's maybe not there that you can fill in. So please go ahead and take these out and start filling those out now. And then you don't even need to listen to me because everything I'm talking about is going to be on this card that we'll give you when you leave today. So if you stop listening, that's okay. Um, as you guys saw, as you came in, we've got the coffee cart up and running. Hopefully you guys got a nice warm beverage. So we're excited about that. Starting next week, those are going to be $5 um, per drink. We are asking for cash only. So I'm telling you guys now so you can be prepared on your way next week. You know, just drive right past Starbucks, come here and grab yourself a coffee. What's really cool about what we're doing here is not only is the profits from the coffee cart going to go to ministries within the church, like Hope City, maybe summer camp, different scholarship things, but we're using Wild Goose Roasters and they give 10 pounds of food to a local food bank for every pound of coffee that's bought. 
And every time we fill up one of those hoppers, that's about five pounds of beans. So not only are you guys helping serve our immediate community here at the church when you buy that coffee, but you're also helping serve the surrounding community with that food. So that is just really cool that not only are you able to get a delicious beverage, but you're also able to give back at the same time. So make sure you guys come prepared for that next week. Um, we've got a lot of a lot of events coming up, especially for families. So as you guys leave today, we have these cards for you that have all the upcoming events. Um, I am going to point out a couple of them to you guys right now, just so you're prepared. But on April 19th, we've got Kenton Bishore coming back. He's the pastor from previous pastor from Mariners Church in Irvine. He came last year and he was so great. So we want to make sure that you guys get that in your calendars. You invite your friends and family to be here. It's going to be an amazing Sunday. We're so blessed to have him back. Also coming up uh, later this month, we have our child dedication. That is a great day. It's a celebratory day where we can uh, come alongside parents that are dedicating their new children, maybe babies, one years old, two years old, whatever it may be. This is an opportunity for you guys to dedicate your children back to the Lord. If you're interested in that, you can register online uh, now. If you have any questions, you can ask me afterwards, but that's a great Sunday. Make sure you tell your friends and families about that. Uh, we've got parent nights to follow that up. We had a lot of great couples and even some single parents as well joining us for our last parent night. It's so cool to get together as parents and just gain wisdom from these people in the church that are just amazing parents. We can ask the hard questions. We can communicate together. And if anything, we get new relationships. I have all kinds of new friends here because I was able to go to parent night and meet these couples. So make sure you guys sign up for that. And we also have father-son uh, coming up at the end of April. If you are a dad, you want to go to this camp. It's going to be at Ironwood. There's going to be tons of fun. Yes, you're going to have fun with your kids. Yes, you guys are going to get dirty and probably shoot paintballs or who knows what. But the most important thing is that you're going to grow in your relationship with your son. And that's so beautiful. And that's priceless. So I encourage you guys to sign up. Moms, sign up your husbands because maybe they won't remember. So moms, pay attention, sign them up. All right, so those are just some of the things that are coming. Make sure you guys grab one of these as you leave today. We do have um, our prayer team available for you after service at the edges of the stage. They want to pray for you. They want to cover you in prayer for anything going on in your life. Um, we love having them, so please take advantage of that. How's everybody doing? Happy Easter. I'll try that again. How's everybody doing? Happy Easter. Hey, great to see you. I just want to say, uh, welcome everybody. We love you here. Can we greet everybody that's online, that's watching? Yep. Yeah. Hey, so the best news ever, think about this, the best news ever in history came out of a cemetery and that Jesus crucified on a cross. He said, it is finished. Death has been defeated. The tomb is empty and Jesus is alive. And that's why we're here today. So can we give it up for the resurrected Jesus? Yeah. But it's a, great, it's a great honor for me to be here with you and to share uh, today. Uh, I want to say that I'm going to have a simple uh, message, and the message is to talk about the resurrection. So uh, I have three points about that. I'm going to talk about how uh, the title of the message is The Resurrection of Jesus. Super creative, huh? So uh, The Resurrection of Jesus. But I'm going to talk about how the resurrection is historical, uh, how it is powerful, and how it is personal. I'm going to do those three things here. So if you're able to stand to your feet, we are going to read Mark chapter 16, verse 2 through verse 7. I will read the first verse, and if you could read the other verses, odd verses, that would be great. So this is the word of the Lord. This is the Easter story. Mark chapter 16, verse 5. Very early on Sunday morning, just at sunrise, they went to the tomb. But as they arrived, they looked up and saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled aside. But the angel of the Lord said, don't be alarmed. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead. Look, this is where they laid his body. Thank you. Well done. You may be seated. And Father, thank you that we are here for everyone watching online. I would just want to say there's no one like you. 
the resurrected king of the ages, our resurrected savior, and you give us a new heart and you make all things new and you give us a new beginning. And we're so grateful that we get to join with millions of people uh, around the world and celebrating the miraculous event which you rose from the dead. And we want to worship you and honor you and glorify you. Father, I pray for everyone here that you would speak to their hearts, that they would experience uh, the essence of the resurrection. As we come to your word, we pray that you'd speak to us. Uh, May it be personal and practical and uh, the implications be eternal. And so we pray that you do what only you could do. And we commit this morning to you and celebrate you in Christ's name. And everyone agreed by saying? Amen. So interesting here that in Mark chapter 16, verse 5, we read that the women were shocked. The women were shocked. And so uh, this, the most profound miracle in all of history, and the word shocked translates this way. It literally means, translates, they were uncontrollably terrified. That was their response here to what happened. So what we're going to do this morning is we're going to look at uh, the background, the historical context of the Easter story. And we're going to look at, first of all, that it is historical. Then we're going to talk about how it is powerful. Then we're going to look at how it is personal for you. But first, historical. So God set in plan, set, set in plan, a plan in place that 2,000 years ago it came to expression, the plan of the ages, and that is that he would rescue the world of sin and death. And so what happened is that God stepped into, you know the story, God stepped into our world in human form and God became flesh and dwelt among us. And so you have God now in human form and he became just like us. And so he had friends like we do. He had foes like we do and he had fans like some of us do. And so what happened then is his friends then began to betray him and began to abandon him. His fans actually became became his foes and were against him. And the Bible says that he was despised and he was rejected by men. So that was his story. And on Good Friday, which we talked about a few days ago, is that they would crucify him. They said, give us Barabbas, and crucify him, Jesus, there, and they nailed him to a cross. So there was Jesus, and he was bloodied, and he was beaten. And the Bible doesn't make a big deal about that. They just sort of tell the story. And he breathed his final breath. He died and was buried. And the disciples then, his followers, were shocked. They were afraid. They were confused. They were freaking out. As Jesus then, God, is there lifeless on a cross, bleeding out, and tortured. The sky turns dark. And so from sunrise, from sundown on Friday until sunrise on Sunday, hope was dead. And so they proclaimed that Jesus was God, but now God was dead. And it's different then than it is now because you all know the end of the story. Like none of them, they didn't know the end of the story. And even though Jesus told them that he would, he would rise again, In their minds, they expected him to stay dead. And so for them, the dream was over. The disciples were defeated. And the disciples were hoping that he would be then the one that would deliver Israel, but but he doesn't. Uh, 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 In their minds, do what they wanted him to do. So you have Peter that denies Jesus. You have then Judas who betrays him. And the death of Jesus then uh, was God's master plan, but they didn't see it that way. And what I want us to see is this, that no one is thinking resurrected, resurrection. No one is like thinking that he's going to come back to life. No one is in that mindset there. And so for them, all of their hopes and all of their dreams are dead. And it is over for them. And so the exclusive savior of the world to them is dead and is not coming back. And even though Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life, In their minds, how can it be then that God died? How can the life be put to death? And so their leader is dead. And I hope that we can understand the the despondency, the depression, uh, how down they were about that. Because no one is around the grave and no one is shouting, you know, hey, nobody panic. You know, we're going to do a countdown. None of that happened there. And so not one of Jesus' 
followers were running around Jerusalem saying, hey, he's going to come back from the dead. Like that does not happen. And so no one is saying the movement is going to be blown wide open here. And even though Jesus in John chapter 19, verse 10 says, it is finished, we notice that he doesn't say, but I am finished. Well, what then is finished here? What is finished here is that the mission has been accomplished, that the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world then uh, is completed, that the redemption of mankind is completed. But now God is at work, and God is at work behind the scenes. There is a Spirit of God engineering the greatest moment in the history of the world, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so we read here in John's Gospel, and I want to draw to your attention here what happens with Mary Magdalene as an example of how she didn't believe Jesus is going to be raised from the dead. It says in John chapter 20, verse 2, and they have taken the Lord, here's her story, and they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we don't know where they put him. So you see here that Mary, she's like completely mourned out. She's expecting to find a dead body. She's expecting here to, uh, to do the embalming of a dead body. And the next verse says, and she thought that he, that's Jesus, was the gardener. She, didn't, she couldn't get, it about her, get her mind around it that Jesus could be raised from the dead. Sir, she said, if you've taken him away, tell me where you've put him and I will go and get him. So Mary thinks that there is no way that Jesus could be resurrected from the dead. And she's certain that he is still dead here. And that was true of the broader circle here that no one is expecting that Jesus is risen from the dead. And so the resurrection was, was not even like a little blip on their radar there. And so, again, they didn't know the end of the story. So the last thing that they're expecting is a resurrected resurrection. And so now to unpack this historical truth found in Paul's letter to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians 15, says this. This is Paul's now writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he says this in verse 3. I passed on to you what was most important, and that's what we're getting, what is most important, and what had also been passed on to me. That is that Christ died for our sins, just as the scriptures said. And he was buried, and he was raised from the dead on the third day, again, just as the scriptures said. And watch this now. I want to, I want to look at this. Watch this now. And it says then that here's the history, that he was seen by Peter and then the 12 disciples. Watch. Okay. And after that, he's seen okay, uh, by more than 5,000 of his followers. How many of you know it's kind of hard to fake out 500 people at the same time? But there it is, by 500 of his followers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, but some have gone to be with the Lord and look. And here it is again. Then he was seen. Look, did you see? It was, he was seen. He was seen. He was seen. And look again here. Now, next verse. And that, last of all, okay, uh, I also saw him. And so, see, uh, there's historical significance here of how many people that saw him that speak of the validity of the resurrection. And here's the point, that they went from like this state of like of, of mopism, of being mopes, to proclaiming the message, to being martyrs. And if the message wasn't true, like how would they, they do that there? So Jesus then, the historical significance is he's seen by all of these eyewitnesses. And so that tells us that they believed in the miracle of the resurrection because they were willing to die for it. And so uh, you say, well, some people say, well, how can you be sure? Like I need, I need more evidence. I need more proof than that. Well, that Jesus then rose from the dead. Well, you have the authors that wrote about it, that Mark wrote about it, that John, that Luke, that Peter, that James. And think about James, if it's not true. Uh, and, I, and I'm speaking to those of you that, that maybe you feel skeptic about this. And um, I'm not trying to do anything. I'm not trying to do some preacher thing to you. I'm just trying to reason with you, really. I just want to reason with you and reason with you, your mind of, uh, of this to, to think about. So this is now the younger brother of Jesus, the half-brother, and he says this about his younger brother. Like, imagine they grew up playing Legos together and all, and, and this is like your younger brother, or your, your older brother's God. And yet, uh, he comes to a point where, though, he actually believed that he was God 
because he was resurrected from the dead. And so he acknowledges that. He says, you know, my bro, that uh, he's not just my bro, like he's God. And so some of you might say, well, I still need more proof. Like that's like Bible talk and that's Bible stuff and all. Okay, so let's, uh, let's set the Bible aside. I'm just trying to show the historical significance and validity. And so let's set the Bible aside and everything that I just, let, let's set that aside. Well, what have you got? What have you got to prove the significance, historical significance of the resurrection? Here's what we got. We have 39 manuscripts and texts from the first and the second century that prove um, that from Jewish, from Greek, and Roman historians, that you can Google all of this, that show the details, great details, of the life, the ministry, the miracles, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so the resurrection is proven with non-biblical uh, historical documents there that prove the evidence of the life and the resurrection of Jesus. Like, who is that? Well, not to bore you with details, but since we're having the conversation, uh, historical records uh, show that historians like, famous historians like Josephus, who wrote one of his uh, books, he wrote Jewish Antiquities. And in that, he was hired by the Romans to go around to the eyewitnesses that saw the resurrection, and he records them, and you can read about them today. That's just one of the 39 manuscripts there. You have Justin Martyr, you have Clement of Alexandria, you have the Roman historian Tacitus. And so all of this, and I could, we could go on for a long time, but I just want to show you one thing here about the resurrection, that this is proof it is real. Secular history also proves it, not only biblical history. I'm going to park that. Now we're going to talk about what this has to do with you. And so not only is the resurrection historical, but it's also powerful. It's powerful. And so Jesus' followers were absolutely changed by what happened on this day there. So they hit the streets declaring the resurrection. And so in today, think about it, two billion people around the world are gathering to celebrate this. And they had one central message that is found in Acts chapter 3, verse 15. So I want to share that with you. And if you can imagine that this is being declared on, uh, on Pentecost there, and you can imagine far away there's Golgotha, and they can see Golgotha, the place of the skull. And there's the people there, and, uh, and it's being proclaimed, and they're saying, hey, like, you... Like, you killed the author of life. Like, it was right over there. And God raised him from the dead. And we're witnesses of the fact of what you did look like right over there. And so, uh, and they would say like, yeah, we know. We know that it's unexplainable. We know it's unimaginable. We know it's, it's impossible. But you need to know it's absolutely undeniable because we saw it. And we've seen him walking the streets of Jerusalem. And so what an incredible verse there found in Ephesians, though, about uh, how the resurrection impacts your life today. Well, how is that? Well, Paul wrote this and he said, of all the things that I could pray for, here's what I'm praying for. And he said this, I pray that you would be able to understand, that you'd be able to comprehend, okay, the incredible greatness of God's power. Well, well, what does that look like, the incredible greatness of God's power? Like, for who? Well, it's for those that would believe in him. It's not for everyone, but those that believe in him. And this is the same mighty power. So here's how it is. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. How many people know how much power it takes to raise somebody from the dead? Like, that's a lot of power, right? Can, can we agree with that? That's a, that's a whole lot of power. And so God's resurrection power, the Bible is saying, here's the personal and the practical implications of the resurrection. His power is made available to you. Anybody in the house need some power? This one, like, can we just be real about, about this here? So think about it. Just think about it. God's resurrection power is made available to you. So what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is this. That means that there's no sin, that there's no habit, there's no addiction, there's no bondage 
There's no emotional stuff, brokenness. There's no relationship. There's nothing that sin has caused that cannot be restored by the power of God. And so, so what that means is that because of the resurrection, it means that all of those things don't have the final word over your life. But you, you think that and you believe that lie. But see, the resurrection tells you that the, the lies that you believe are not true. And that's why you need to let your mind be renewed to what God has said. And so the, the reality is, is that because of the resurrection, all the guilt, all the shame, all the failures, uh, uh, all the, the memories that you have that you look back in measures, measures of regret, all of those things don't have the final word over your life because the power that raised Jesus from the dead, it dwells in you. So, so I just like to stop and pause and ask you this question. Like, do you believe that? Like you're a Christ follower, do you, do you believe that? Do you believe that the power of the resurrection could actually change your life? Like in the tent, do you believe that? And so we have new power, the same power that raised Christ from the dead. That's pretty awesome, don't you think? That's pretty awesome, isn't it? And so think about it. This same power that raised Christ from the dead is available to you, like for what? It's available to you for your relationships, for your marriage, to get over your past so that your past could actually be past and not have to live in light all the time of, of the past haunting you or whatever haunts you. So uh, the power that's available for you to, your morals to do what is right, the, the power that's available for your emotional world here, the power to, to start over. Like they had to start over, the power for a fresh start, the power for uh, a new beginning, uh, the power, how about to keep going? How many people in the house, sometimes you face things that's so daunting that you feel like you, don't even, you can't even keep going. The power to keep on keeping on here when you're, you're running out of strength and steam and you want to give up here. And so uh, the power, uh, the resurrection uh, of Jesus is not only historical, but it is, pow it is powerful for you on a personal level. And lastly, I want to talk about this. I want to talk about that the resurrection is also intensely personal, intensely personal here. Uh, we read in Mark chapter 16, verse seven, watch. I want you to look at this. Like, look at the verse here on the screen. How personal is it? Now, the angel says, go tell the disciples Jesus is resurrected, watch. Including Peter. I mean, how personal is that? Is it, go tell like Peter. Well, why would we tell Peter? Well, Peter feels like he's a colossal failure. Like the leader of the disciples is the one who is the denier. And he's living under this cloud of guilt and shame. So when the resurrection is announced, go and tell the disciples. And, and personally, go tell Peter. Isn't that awesome? See, see, God would do that. I was you. Like, there's times where he likes to, he needs to go and tell you that you need to hear God's voice. That that's how personal that the, that the resurrection is here. And so the leader, when the leader, when the leader's in meltdown mode, when the leader has, has punched out, when the leader has bailed on Jesus, the angel says, yeah, go, go tell Peter. He needs to know here. And so see how, how personal the resurrection is? But all that to say this, like it's got to become personal for you. And I wonder how personal that it is for you. Is the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, is it? personal for you. And so the resurrection is what, what it means for Jesus is that he beat death and he beat the grave and he rose again. But on a personal level, we can beat death and beat the grave uh, and be raised to life in him. Do you believe that? Well, this day that we're celebrating, and this is important for me that you, you hear this, that this day that we're celebrating here, it was never meant by God to be a religious holiday. It was never meant to be what it has turned out to in America, because they did a survey, 
and they found that 67% of Americans believe uh, that there's Easter. Something happened religiously in Easter. But somewhere around 40% believed actually that there was a resurrection. So that what that means is today, the majority of Americans, they don't get it. Like they don't understand what Easter is all about here. And so this is what they do. The majority of Americans do this. They think that there's this old dusty story and they just check a box and go back to their life. And this has absolutely nothing to do with their real life. But the resurrection is completely not personal. But the resurrection was designed by Almighty God to be profoundly personal. I want to close with that. Because of the resurrection, the Bible says, you have new hope. In other words, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 says this. He says, and God has caused us to be born again. That is to have a, a right relationship with God. Okay, born again to what? Like to a living hope. And so you have something that no one else has when, you, you have, when you're born again. And how does that happen? Well, it happens not through circumstance, but it happens through a person. So watch, all of hope is based on a person. And the person is Jesus through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from there. I mean, there it is, through the resurrection. That's, that's the source, the foundation of all hope here. So I want us to think about that for a moment here because Jesus died and he rose again. And the implications of that are this. He gives you hope every single day. How many people are glad there was a resurrection? Somebody? And so check this out. So in the Bible, the word hope is used 71 times. 71 times the word hope is, is, is in the Bible. One time, only one time, is the word used before the resurrection. Like one time, like, like that's it. It's almost like that you just know that the word exists. One time in the entire New Testament, the word is there before the resurrection. And so just to kind of give you a, a feel, and then after the resurrection, 70 times. So see, the resurrection gives us hope. And let me say this. If you're, you're new to church or you're, you're brought here, you're a guest, let me say this, or for everyone. See, our hope doesn't come from something. Oh, I hope. Oh, I hope the circumstances. Oh, my life is good. Oh, I hope. That's not where hope comes from. Think about it. Hope comes from someone. It's from a person, Jesus Christ here. See, so the resurrection is designed to be personal for you, but watch. This will only become personal for you if it is personal to you. So you can come to Easter year after year, whether it's you go however many times you go to church, and it's never personal to you. It'll never be, it'll be real to you, and you never get then to experience the benefits of it, the power, uh, the hope here. And so the resurrection is true, and we basically prove that, uh, but, but it needs to be true to you. It can't just be historically true. It needs to be true to you. And so I wrestle over what I'm going to talk about. I wrestle. And so, uh, and in the midst of my wrestling over what I was going to talk about, I felt like I heard God's voice. And here's what I feel like I heard. This is what I feel like I heard. If Jesus was here today, I think he would tell us this. Jesus would stand up here today and he would tell us this. This cannot that is Easter, Resurrection Sunday. This cannot be a holiday or a historic story. My resurrection must become your story. God wants to write the resurrection story into your personal story so that when you leave here this morning, personally owning this story, the resurrection story. You see, this is the point here, the starting point. Some of you here, you need to start. Some people watching online, you need to start. 
You need a spiritual restart. You need to hit the restart button. See, maybe you've believed, but you're the type that are aware of it, but it's not become your story. That was never the intent. The intent of the resurrection was to be so intensely personal that it is your story and you live out this story. What does the story look like? Well, you're living out the story of a personal relationship with him. Because of the resurrection then, you personally, you can win. You can win over sin. You can win over your past. You win over death and the grave. But that has to become personal. And so the Bible puts it this way as the band comes up. It says this, whoever, whosoever. In other words, this is for everyone. This is for everyone here that whosoever does what? Whosoever believes, whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't say that whosoever becomes religious, whosoever becomes a church person. No, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. And so the name of the resurrected Christ. So shall be saved. So I just would ask this morning, because it's so personal, are you saved? I mean, you know. If you're saved, in other words, are, are you right with God? Do you have a, do you have a relationship with God? Is it, is it real to you? And so my question to you is this, is have you chosen um, Jesus today? And, uh, and I would ask this, oh yeah, I, I did. Okay, but are you continually choosing him? Not just did you choose in the past, but are you continually choosing him? And perhaps if you've never done that, have you chosen that your sins would be forgiven? Have you chosen to be a child of God? And I recognize this. And again, I'm just telling the truth. We're just having a conversation. I'm not trying to do the preacher thing to anybody. But I want to say this. Sometimes you just have to make a decision, and you have to make a bold decision. And for you today, there are those of you here that... You're here because it's a holiday. And the reality is you're not all here today because you've wanted to experience and make this personal. And I'm pleading with you that you would make it personal. Some of you, you would push back on that. You would say this, oh, but I have had all of my, my, all of my questions answered. Well, let's think about that. Is this an important decision? Yeah, it's like really, really, really important. Like the most important decision you would ever make. But I haven't had all of my questions answered. Let's think about that. If there's anybody married in the house, I would ask this. You decided to get married, but did you have all of your questions answered before you got married? And those of you that have kids, anybody in the house have kids? Did you have all of your questions about kids answered before you had kids? Like these are the most important decisions of your entire life, like your career that you've entered. Did you have all of your answer, all of your questions answered about your career before you entered into the career? Or those of you that have gone to school, high school, college, grad school, whatever, did you have all of your questions answered? No, no, no. No, if you bought a home or bought something significant, have you, did you have all of your questions answered before you bought a home and you knew everything that it would ever entail before that, before this major decision here? See, the truth is this. The truth is that every single major decision you have ever made in your entire lifetime, you have never had all the facts, never known all the information, and you made a major decision. Some point, You step out by faith and you make a major decision. And the reality is that there's just one thing that you need to know. And here's the one thing you need to know. is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever, that is everyone. And maybe you're here this morning and on Easter day and you are the whosoever that John 3.16 is talking about. See how personal that is? That whosoever would just believe, that would put their faith in him, 
won't perish, that is eternally perish away from the presence of God, but you would have life eternal and, and life even now. So you can put your hand in, into God's hand here. And so today you have the opportunity, how beautiful on Easter that you would do that. It's been said that there's about a thousand steps to go to God. And Jesus has made 999 of those steps toward you, reaching out his hand toward you. And all you have to do is take one step. And what is the step? Just to believe. That's all you have to do is to believe. And maybe for some of you, to re-believe, to believe again, to courageously take this step here. And so to say yes to God, bring no requirements with your yes that you would be a child of God, a son of God, a daughter of God, that you would begin to live a life here, a new life that is a God-guided life. I mean, don't you want that? Like, 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 why would you not want that? Personal for you. So I'm gonna encourage you to take a step, that you take Jesus as your savior, acknowledging that he died for your sins, acknowledging that he's the resurrected Christ and to believe into him and to receive him and to begin a relationship or others that may need to re-begin that, to renew your faith this Easter. So I'm gonna ask you if you, and this is a sacred moment and where your seat is, it's just like a sacred space for a sacred moment if you would bow your heads. And Father, I pray that in this sacred moment, And I know that you brought everyone here, that it's not by accident that they're here for this moment. And some of you would say yes in your heart. And if that's you, you want to say yes with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, that you would acknowledge this, that I want to follow you, Jesus. And repeat that, that I want to take you as my savior, that I want you to forgive me of my sin that I want you to be the Lord of my life. And I want to surrender to you. There's others of you here that you have followed, but you have not surrendered. And you know you have not surrendered. And today is your day to say, I'm I'm stopping the playing of games and I'm going to surrender. For those of you that have never received Christ, to say, come live inside me. I believe you are the crucified son of God. I believe you died and you were buried and you rose again. And today, I believe. I put my faith in you. If that's you, where you're sitting in your seat, with our eyes closed and our heads bowed, I want you to just raise your hand and acknowledge that to God. That was me. I believe. And thank you, Lord. We pray you would seal your word in our hearts by your grace. In Christ's name, amen. If you want to stand to your feet.
bids me come and die and fly that I may truly live Oh, the wonderful cross Oh, the wonderful cross Oh, the wonderful cross All who gather here By grace draw near And bless your name One more time we sing it out Oh, the wonderful cross Oh, the wonderful cross All who That's so great. That's so much fun. How many people are glad they gathered here today? Yeah, so great. Thank you for coming to church. Uh, so I got a couple things, and then I'm going to bless us out. So one thing that I have is this, is that if you prayed that prayer, and many of you did, but if you prayed that prayer to take Christ as your resurrected Savior, I want to encourage you to come to church. That'll be your next step. So there's lots of great churches in the area, and this is one of them. So if you don't have one, we'd invite you back next week, or maybe wherever you're from, to find a church. The second thing is this, is that the Bible says this. It says to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. And so there comes a time where you recognize what Jesus has done, and in your personal life, you just might shout out. And I recognize, you know, you got people are wired up differently. You've got the extreme extroverts and extroverts and introverts and extreme introverts and all that jazz. But it was written to everybody. Reg regardless of where you, where you land, that was written to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Well, Jesus has triumphed on Easter, triumphed over death, over the grave, over sin. So I'm just going to create space before we leave here to, to do that, to shout unto God with a voice of triumph. On the count of three, you can just channel that, that inner extrovert and shout. Are you ready? You ready in the back, in the tent, huh? Count three, one, two, three. Yeah! We shout unto God with a voice of triumph. That felt good. That felt good. All right. Okay. So I want to, I want to pray God's blessing over you. Receive this blessing. Father, thank you as you see your children gathered here on Resurrection Sunday. How cold it is and raining outside, but inside you have warmed our hearts with the reality of the resurrection. And grant by grace that your grace that we could personally, on a personal level, that we could walk out of here in the reality of your resurrection that it would be personal, that we would be empowered by the same power that raised Christ from the dead, that we would experience God writing the resurrection story into our personal story, that we would be transformed by the power of the resurrection to live the life that only we can live by him and in him and through him, a God-guided life, that you would breathe afresh upon us, that you would spiritually renew us, that you would give us your peace knowing that the grave is empty and death is defeated and Jesus is alive. Father, I pray that you would bless them, that you would do more, you would do this and you would do more in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit until we see you face to face. God bless you. Go in peace and happy resurrection. See you next time. Hear the shackles breaking free. Hear the song.